we it's are fighting a job. Uh, uh, the judging an entire team and an entire season over one point miss. I mean, I understand it's like a six or seven points below eight points. Yeah, but hey, one point is uh, is 50, 60, 70 million dollars. I know, you hey, know that's so why. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Serie A Audio Experience with IFTV. Round 38, officially over the Serie A season, done and dusted. And I know we don't have a real Scudetto race on our hands in Serie A, but the Champions League race was one of the most exciting that I think I've ever seen Definitely in recent the best memory. in Europe, I think. We, right? were, we, we had... Um, Nick and Matt Santangelo, we had Sebastian Giordano, we had everybody over. We were watching three different screens. We had uh, Inter Empoli, Sassuolo Atalanta, and uh, Spal Milan, and we were going nuts. Havoc. One of the most exciting last days that I can remember. I don't know where to start over here. I don't want to push anybody's buttons a little <laughs> bit um, too quickly. Well, I know where to start. Oh, um, man, Gaetano saying For it's all the Inter fans, man, you must have really strong hearts mm -hmm. because that game, <laughs> the, I mean, I was on the edge, on the edge of my seat. The things that, that, that were happening, and you know, hand to end, and when Empoli uh, tied the game, and then uh, when uh, Inter went back up, and when you thought that it was over and that um, they scored, Brozovic scored that third goal, mm -hmm. and then Nine they went. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brozovic, the third goal, and then they went back to the replay, and they saw the Keita brought uh, the goalkeeper oh, down. So the goal was disallowed, and Keita got a red card, and like an idiot, he was. Oh, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> you're brainless. You took your shirt off. And, and when you scored the goal, which you scored a nice goal, but you took your shirt off. And then when it doesn't make any sense, there's one minute left in the game. The guy's he's got an open net. The goalkeeper is out of the goal. He's scoring a goal. And you take the other guy down, which uh, for the last, how, how long was it left? Maybe a minute? Uh, yeah, 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 a yeah, minute and a half? Minutes, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and they had another chance to score. Yeah. Empoli had another Empoli chance. Empoli had another chance yeah. to score. Right after that one. Right after that. Yeah. Right after that but what one. What was Keita Balda uh, thinking? I, I mean, if I am a coach, Keita Balda will never play one more minute. <laughs> oh one God. more minute I'd for my scared. team. I would be scared to be your player. <laughs> you're, guys, you're out. You will never play a Just game. Just making a mistake. Go to China. Go to some place wherever you want to go. To go to play in Japan. Go play in Mexico. But do not come and play in for my team. Just because of a mistake. It, it made no sense that he pulled Dragowski down because was was Dragowski supposed to run 50 meters to stop the ball from going inside the net? I don't, maybe he was so a far away. Or I don't know what yeah. else it would be. There was no way he was getting that. I think the adrenaline just got to him. He didn't know what to do, and he just yeah, he was, pulled the guy that, that was, was right there. Uh, you know, for the Inter fans, oh, oh my god. Uh, that's why they say Pazza Inter, right? Crazy Inter. That's mm -hmm. that's even more than crazy what oh, happened yesterday. Yeah. We can never win. You know, and just be relaxed. You know, Icardi has the penalty. Oh my if God. it was penalty, it was not a penalty, whatever. But you again, have the chance. Again, another, have, another, another one of those situations where, you, you know, it's not a penalty. They give them the penalty. You have the chance to oh, make no, it. No, no. it was a they missed yeah, it. They it missed it. You make it. It was a penalty. They missed it. They missed the penalty. They, I know, but there was a penalty, deserve. yes or not? I, to me, I didn't think I it mean, was. I mean, it got the ball. Uh, anyway. Get the ball first, anyway. I watched it. It was not. He got the ball and then. Yeah, then he clipped him. We'll see. But you have a chance to make it 2 nothing, yeah. finish the game, relax, you know, and just manage the game. No, what do we do? We missed the penalty. Empoli, from that miss, reacted very, very well. Empoli, we saw the past three games, they were playing great. They they were moving the ball. Inter They've always played good yeah, football. The always. first half, Inter played very, very well. You can see that they actually wanted it, unlike the Napoli game that we watched. Um, Dragowski, crazy saves. Uh, you know, and, and then Spalletti making the right move. He went. Out, he went. He brought Keita in the second half. And we took did, out. We, took out. Uh, who was it? Asamoah. Was Asamoah? Yeah, he took Asamoah out Asamoah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took out Asamoah and moved Perisic back to uh, left back. Mm. Okay, and then creating a more attacking style uh, team. 
Keita in five minutes re- react is able to score the great goal, and then you think, okay, this is gonna be easy for us, right? Not easy, but we could we we now okay. have the 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 foot ahead, and then Empoli scores one one. I will not, at the same time, Milan scores the third goal after coming oh, back. Man. So we're out of the Champions League. I didn't want to be near by Spalletti. I don't know if, I, I, if he did something on his, uh, you know, uh, if he smelled but. around him, if he was uh, shitting on his pants. <laughs> it was just so crazy because, uh, yeah, what do you call it? Yesterday, I, I never saw, seen Peter like this. He, yeah, was, my God. he was screaming. He was happy. I don't know what to do. Guys, if you want to see a little sneak peek, we have actually our Instagram stories, a sneak peek of how it actually went yesterday. Gotta we got quick, Peter's reaction when he was happy, out. when he was sad, when he was screaming, when there was like 15 minutes left and Inter probably would have been in Europa League but they got the goal it was it was crazy it was Anto, mayhem the kid Nick over here he's a big Milan fan he had yeah. a Maldini shirt he was wearing oh, a Maldini boy. jersey we got pizza uh-huh. he wouldn't eat pizza until Milan were in Champions League so the entire time he's like I don't deserve it until Milan were secure uh, so there was a point where Milan you know they were winning 2-0 against and then he had to spal, right <laughs> Sassuolo were winning Ring. 1-0 against Atalanta, Atalanta. Oh, Inter was shit. in trouble so he starts he grabbed the pizza pizza he was regretting it the entire time he's like because I ate the pizza <laughs> Milan didn't end up going into Champions League. But I want to say... Uh, what's with these AC Milan fans? <laughs> <laughs> Superstitious. Switching seats, not yeah, eating. Switching what's going seats, on? Switching seats, eating pizza, not eating pizza. <laughs> but I want to say that Handanovic oh deserves God. an increase in his contract to the maximum because he is the reason why Inter oh are in the Champions God. League right now. The amount of chances that Empoli had and Handanovic has saved. He should own part of Inter for his performance yesterday. He was a wall. Absolutely incredible. I think almost any other keeper in net and Milan and Atalanta are in Champions League. Yeah. That's yeah. how for sure. That's yeah. how for crucial sure. Handanovic sure. was. Yeah, he was so good. There were two memes going around. Uh, it's one with uh, Handanovic's face. <laughs> like a, a, it looks like Jesus. I got to show you. It's oh, funny. yeah. And they were just replaced. <laughs> like on a right? saint, right? Yeah, yeah on a saint. saint. And then you have uh, the Inter fan with like... Sweating. Not even that sweating. One? Just dead on the floor. Uh-huh. Getting his blood pressure taken. Because that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, you know, the best thing is that I didn't watch any one of those games. I was hijacked by my wife to go to see her cousins over there. Three hours away. <laughs> So I, I, that, that probably was, was the it best better? thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I would have probably got to aggravate Quick, quick and painless, and right? maybe you will have a couple less TVs on the, on the studio. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were, we were losing our minds. Um, and Sassuolo, Sassuolo was winning 1-0 in the game against Atalanta. And I was thinking, I said, what a, the feeling that I had that Atalanta was going to throw it away, I thought it was happening. Um, but then... Uh, Berardi was really stupid. He got a red card. Right half time. Atalanta came back. We know Atalanta, they just keep attacking. They ended up balancing out the game, and they were in total control. And we knew at a point, once it got to 2-1 with 10 men, Atalanta was not really conceding too much. And Atalanta was secure. But it was still that Milan um, Inter, that Milan and, sure. and Inter game. And I think that that's, that's where the focus went. Once it was Milan, we thought it didn't matter if Milan even won at that point. They were watching. Everybody was watching the Empoli game, which... Um, Unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you see it, went the way that it did. Antonio, as a Milan fan, you felt like you guys were not going to get into the Champions League. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about um, the season as a as a whole from your perspective? A little disappointed, but I'm not going to be saying that I'm happy. A little disappointed, but uh, you know, nothing. I'm not going to take anything away from the effort that they put on the field. It, you know, we we fought until the last minute. So, uh, was it a failure of a season? Or no, 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 nothing is ever a failure, but uh, it could have been better, of course. I mean, we got, we got penalized a few times. Where do you... Juventus, uh, a penalty that was not given to us. Uh, you know, a few other circumstances. The penalty that was given to Inter, I just saw the highlight <laughs> that was not a penalty. Well, did it go uh, in? Doesn't that, matter. Well, well, where do you think? Where it, do you think it, it went count. wrong for for Milan it this season? Because you guys were doing really, really, I really think, well uh, at a two point. Two or three key games, easy game that if we should have at least tied, we we lost. But and that's I think for every that, team, though. There's always okay. No, no. Let them say. I want to know where you feel. That game against Fiorentina that we lost at home was very, very key. We never were supposed to be losing at home, and that was. One of the only highlights of uh, Chiesa's career uh, of this year. He didn't do much, to be honest with you. But uh, he, he uh, went sure. up uh, scoring the, the winning goal uh, in Milano. And then they lost, uh, they lost at home against AC Milan. How the hell are you like that? Mm-hmm. So. We got we, we to talk about Atalanta, a team 111 years in the making. They've never played in Europe's elite competition. Um, we went through values before. I think they were valued at like 120 million compared to Inter and Milan, six, 700 million. 
with a fraction of the budget that everybody spends with um, all the odds stacked against them with a lesser squad with players that barely make um, what the Inter and Milan players make are in Champions League and are in third place. I know third and fourth place don't really matter too much, but also a sense of pride because none of us could have imagined at the beginning of the season, if you told any of us that Atalanta were going to finish in third place, you would have you probably would have thought that they were crazy. Where do you think that this Atalanta team found the, not, not inspiration, but how were they able to make what seemed impossible possible? Look at the coach. Look at the coach. That's the, the, the answer is right there on your question. The answer is the coach. Everybody else? I think you have to see the quality of players, what? one. Because, listen, hear me out. They have a lot of players there that they know how to play in Serie A. They've been playing together for a, a while. And you have a good mix of players. You have guys in the front that you have Zapata, uh, Ilicic, Ilicic Papu. and Papu Gomez, where they all marry each other well. Zapata is the strong, hungry striker. This year he had a breakout year. So, I mean, of course, you, a lot of things have to go your way. Papu Gomez, crafty, second striker. Uh, able to, Yeah, exactly. Able to create something out of nothing. Ilicic, fantastic player. The only thing is he always has ups and yeah. downs. But this year really Mostly solidified ups. Now, his That's career. what I'm saying. So it all worked together. So, I mean, yeah. And who's Gas that glue? Listen, Gasparini also, I'm not going to take away any credit. I'm not saying Gasparini is the... 100% reason why Atalanta got third place. I think w what also influenced Atalanta's uh, ability to get third place was Milan not being able to take control of their destiny. Inter not being able to take control of certain games. Roma. You know, Roma. So there was a lot of slip-ups there. Lots Atalanta were, were that steady team. They play the right football. They know how to play the attacking style that Gasperini wants. And they're more confident in this whole season. they beaten top teams yep. they beat in Juventus inter. they beat in Inter you know everybody so, but Milan I yeah. think so these are these are guys here that are hungry they they listen to what Gasperini says they they bought into the uh Atalanta mentality and I think it's great for Bergamo the only thing that sucks is I really wish they could be able to yeah. build a stadium and have their yeah. team host the Champions That's League because better. besides just the team it also helps for the whole city because you know how many people come in hotels and everything else so it actually creates uh, a real economy. economic yeah. benefit to the city. It's like a mini World Cup when they have a World yeah. Cup in like a country. Especially it helps, for better economic growth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially yeah, for what I what I liked about uh, Atlanta is uh, when these teams uh, they play Juventus, any other teams they play Juventus, I feel like they're scared. They're scared to win, even if they're winning one nothing, they find a way to lose. Mm -hmm. Uh, Atlanta has got the winning mentality that uh, they go forward. No matter against who they're playing, they go forward, uh, they push, and they play a very entertaining soccer. So that, that, the credit goes to all the players, the quality of the players, and also to Gasparini. Yeah. Now, what I'm worried about Atlanta is they interviewed Gasparini last night, and they asked him, you know, are you staying or should I, will I see you in Rome next week? And he said, "Well, I'm meeting with uh, uh, I'm meeting with the president uh, uh, today or tomorrow, and then I will let you know." So I don't know if there is something uh, there. Uh, he, he, you know, I, I thought he would say, "Absolutely, you know, I'm not going anywhere. This is the team. We're going to get a few more players uh, because now, if you're playing Champions League, you get a couple of more players. Maybe you, you'll be able to win a couple a, of games. Make a run, you know, get out of group, group stage, right? Yeah, get a lot right. more money. It's very scary so. to hear that Ilicic, Castagne, Gasparini are all already heavily linked with a move away, yeah. which would be, and I'm hoping that that was just the sense. Only if they didn't get Champions League, and I'm hoping that the Champions League changes it, where it's like, guys, we could really do something. We've got a good group. Percasi says, listen, we don't need the money. We don't need to take that money because we're in Champions League and we could go further. And with every game that you win in Champions League, you gain extra money. And if you got out of the group stage, you get even yeah. extra. Yeah. So I think it's a good opportunity for Atalanta to show their mentality, like you said, in Italy, also in Europe and not respect their opponents too much as they didn't show this year. So I think it's really amazing in okay. that sense. Now. I want to answer to Pete before. I say, in a scale of 1 to 10, how much does Gasparini influence the, the, the Atalanta uh, way of, uh, of playing the games and uh, the standing and everything else? 
one to ten. Just give so me one So there's number. two different things. You're saying no, no, the way, the style they play, no, or the everything, everything. I, I would say seven, eight, seven, eight. So, yeah. so Gasperini, it's eighty percent of Atalanta's mentality. Twenty percent is the player. Uh, About you guys, what do you think? That's you not, with Peter? Yeah, that's not okay. what I said. This is the reason <laughs> why <laughs> you're twisting it. This is that's not what I said. Well, let me just answer. You said the question. style of play. So, Gasperini okay. has an influence in the style and of what play. What about the mentality? The mentality, yes. Okay, that's also, 99%. but that's not. Yeah, but also you, you have to have the right players that can play. In the the right players. Let me tell you about something about the right player. All of those players were nothing but bench or substitute of Ocasie of uh, uh, Conti. Conti. All of those players that they sold. Okay. Okay. They're not that they were bench they, players. Listen, they came after. I bet you Gasparini can get can get rid of another fifty of those fifty uh, percent of those guys, and will find from the youth. will find just the talent good enough for uh, for Atalanta to be on the top well, four or five. Well, it's teams. not also just the youth. They have good scouting. They have a lot of players on that team, and they're not Italian. Hattenbur, Gasper- these guys. This, and okay. Oh, now, okay. Um, let me rephrase my question to you. Okay. Let me use my light bulbs. Okay. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The question will be this. You put the same Atalanta players, okay, mm-hmm. on the hand of uh, uh, Spalletti. What mm-hmm. do you think the results would be? Sixth place. Listen. <laughs> Not even. Maybe you're fighting for Serie B. Not necessarily. Uh, oh. Not listen, necessarily. This but they're not going to be anywhere near Champions League. No, yeah. probably not. Okay, so the coach is 90% of what he's supposed to. You hey, know, 90%. 90%. 90%. <laughs> For me, it's 90%. You're exaggerating. Okay, man. that's why now everybody was talking about Gasperini. Gasperini linked to Roma. Uh, why, why do you think Allegri is going to? Allegri is the reasons why Juventus failed this year. Because of his mentality. And when they win, is it his What win? The ugly win is not a okay, win. With guys, all the talents that you have, I don't want to argue. I don't want to go down an argument that we've said millions and millions of times. <laughs> Instead, I got something fun. I went back um, to August where we made our predictions mm. of the top four. I cut it down and I got everybody's uh, predictions over here. And we're going to see who said what and we'll react to it. Okay? So I'll play it right now. Juventus, Inter, Napoli, Milan. So you got. I got two, two, three right, you, but not even in the same, yeah. not even in the same order. Yeah, not in the same order. All right, let's see who's next. I think Inter Juventus is gonna be very close. I wouldn't be happy. <laughs> 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 Juventus second. Lazio. Fiorentina, Mike. That was a good pick. <laughs> you said inter triplete. But you know the way I talk to yeah. Peter. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> season that ends 18, 9, 8, and 9. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they won the Coppa Italia. Roma and fourth place Lazio. Holy crap. Me, Roma, Lazio. Jesus Christ. So, nobody saw Atalanta. No. <laughs> Wait, Gaetano, you said Roma fourth and third, Lazio? No. What did no, you say? No, no, no. He said Lazio, Lazio fourth. And yeah. who's third? Um, who was third? <laughs> it was Lazio and Roma, no? Or that was. So Atalanta finished Juventus. Juventus, Inter, Lazio. Juventus, Inter. For the fourth team, Napoli. Napoli. Roma, you said. So it's a Napoli? He said Roma, I think. Because they're not the Juventus in seasons that end eight and nine. Yeah. <laughs> and then Antonio, yeah, it's true. It's true. Mike, Mike, oh, Fiorentina, top four. Yeah. Oh, Mike. Could I didn't say top four, but I said they couldn't make No, but you were saying it. extra huso before the podcast. <laughs> how what, what, how crazy. Everyone has performed on that team. Let's be for real. How right. crazy is it that they were close. fighting? Fiorentina, Atalanta. <laughs> They're both blue, right? Close, right? right. Close enough. Blue. Close enough. <laughs> Shades of blue. So everybody, Purple. so everybody, has mostly two out of four. I had three. Yeah. 
Who did you I, Oh, you had three? At Inter, Juventus, Napoli, and I picked Lazio. But the sequence was wrong. Yeah, though. the sequence. I have a bad. Wait, so Antonio. <laughs> the sequence. Well, I, had, I had three, too, but the sequence was wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn, I put Napoli as fifth. Jeez. Napoli fifth. To, oh, be, wait. to be fair, Lazio <laughs> could have very easily made Champions League law. Actually, they lost points against. I have I have Gazeta's predictions right. too. Mm. Okay. Gazeta's prediction: first Juventus, second Inter, third Roma, wow. fourth Milan, fifth Napoli, sixth Lazio, seventh Fiorentina, and eighth Atalanta. I don't feel so bad then if if uh, Gazeta put that right. No, you know, not bad. Eighth, experts, uh, right? eighth Atalanta. Well, listen, looks like Napoli was the, yeah, the was, team yeah. that actually well. I, when I, in the beginning, when I you predicted did, Napoli third, I said, Napoli, the team is is this pretty much the same. Mm. You're adding Ancelotti. It's a guy that knows how to manage a team. So, I mean, maybe they don't go <laughs> second place, I didn't think at the time, but they were going to get into Champions League. Antonio, we have a question over here from a Milan fan. It says, Antonio, how do I stop the tears? How do you stop the tears? There's no tears. He said there is no crying. He, he, has, said tears. he, has, he tears. has tears. There is, no, there is no crying in soccer, my friend. No? No crying. Well, some of the uh, comments last night that I heard is that uh, you know AC Milan uh, they're happy with the Europa League. They, they are. The, yeah, that Gattuso did a good job, and uh, that was where they belong. That's what they with that team. Who's some, who's this someone? <laughs> this one. The the comments from some of well, the uh, uh, commentators. Mm. Antonio, to be honest with you, Milan right now, I don't feel like they're ready to be even compete for Champions League. They're still in that rebuilding phase, so it's really not the worst thing in the world. To mm -hmm. be honest with you. Because at the end of the day, they still need players. They got to rebuild. They got to get a new coach. So it's not, I don't think it's that bad. Because if they want a Champions League, let's be realistic. They'd get I, the money, but how far would they go? Listen, at this point, I'd rather to see Gattuso still working on, uh, as a, on the project. That's what I was going to ask you. Wow, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, they're saying wow. now Leonardo is, is wow. supposed to hand in yeah, his resignation, resignation very soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what Leonardo has done wrong. To be honest with you, they said him and Gazidis are not getting along mm -hmm. in terms of where they see things going forward. But Leonardo... Why Paqueta was was he playing yesterday? No, no he why was, not? He He's hurt, isn't he? Wasn't he suspended for the last suspended two matches? Suspended or hurt? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know what really he's done wrong. Leonardo's done wrong. I wonder uh, they probably look at all the players that he bought over, you know, and over a year. Or, yeah, most of them didn't didn't work out. That most of them. Piontek the, is the only thing that was saving it, them to get into Champions League. Paqueta yeah. was a really good center midfielder for them. Right, right. Those how two, many other how many other transfers did he else. really make? I didn't make money. Okay, maybe change. there's a few more that I'm not thinking no, of right the, now. There's the Spanish guy. Oh, uh, Castillejo. Castillejo. Yeah, Castillejo. He right. said it didn't work out. In other words, most of the other players... Higuain. The, the, Higuain was the, a bad one. Higuain, Higuain, Higuain was, was a, a bad, bad one. one. They spent a lot of money for Higuain. Yeah, most oh, of yeah. the uh, players, their that. value went down. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, maybe with the exception of those two, everybody else's value went down. So that's what they look at. Yeah, it. but still, one year, and then you're already judging it. And and then now they're saying Maldini doesn't know what he's going to do. To me, I would keep them both, but what do I know? Nothing. Well, sometimes it no, has nothing to do with what's going on in the field. Sometimes if if they don't work well together, there's they're not busy. yeah, you're not able to here do anything. Here we it's, are fighting, a job. Or, or the judging an entire team and an entire season over one point miss. I mean, I understand it's like a six or seven points below eight points. Yeah, but hey, one point is uh, is. 50, 60, 70 million dollars. I know. Hey, you know that's so why, that's, I, I, unfortunately, uh, soccer is all about that's it. That's the way it's it is. It's about money. It's not about the game. 40 million for Four, the... Yeah, I think it's 40 million. Just, just, just to a big... 40 million just, just to be just there. Secure, just to yeah. secure. Yeah. 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 yeah, but then plus in the Champions League while you're there. The yeah. wins, TV the bonuses, rights, yeah. you got games won. Games. Yeah, you got jersey sales, sales, uh, stadium. Well, AC Milan doesn't need, you know, to be commercialized to sell shirts he, uh, he's, well, he's the best franchise in the world where so you don't need that in which world in which world <laughs> guys brandon asks how far will atalanta go next season in uefa champions league i know that the transfer market will uh, dictate a lot a but one. at the moment they're gonna be think? in pot four uh for you guys so it's gonna be yeah. the weakest pot in champions league uh just Underst throwing that out there i yeah, i don't i don't agree when i i don't agree one Bit of what you just said, you guys. Well, you guys keep playing saying? down Atalanta that it, they need to buy players. They have the players. I didn't say that. If they, they are good player. enough to make I said not players. sell. I said not sell too many players. They're not going to sell that many. Okay. And if it, Where if, do you think they could go in Champions League? They can go... Uh, could they leave group stage? Of course they're going to they're gonna make... Leave group stage? stage. That'd of be course, successful if they of leave course things... Stage. 
luck plays a factor as much as I don't like to use well, the term luck. Well, if they get paired with Barcelona in the first round or maybe or, or Real Madrid with... If, uh, they, if they get in a group like Inter got with Barcelona and Tottenham, yeah. okay, it's very difficult, but you know? A, you know if but then the, there's there's some pots that... Who is a pot with Porto that it was... No, yeah. well, it they could definitely play Listen, their... Take their shot. It's a, lot, a lot has to do with luck. But I think also thinking uh, the different way. I think a team like Real Madrid or a team that, that's in the first two pots or first three part, pots rather... They're going to have a hard time if Atalanta is in their group because mm-hmm. they play up to their competition. Now it's just a matter of not selling players, making some investments, buying someone. Mm-hmm. Listen, you can say all you want that they don't need anybody. They need somebody because you need, in Champions League, you need depth. By the way, talking about, uh, since you mentioned Barcelona, uh, I watched some of that Barcelona-Valencia game, oh, the you know, which they was a Copa del Rey. Okay, And we're talking about Barcelona. Okay, they lost yeah. with the best Valencia. Pl- with Valencia and the best player in the world. And uh, Juventus beat so, Valencia with ten men. Okay, mm-hmm. so, in in Valencia, uh, you know, going back to uh, you know these teams that uh, you think it's easy to win, it's not easy to win. So when you win, you know, four years in a row, five years in a row, it's not easy. And Barcelona. Uh, everybody thought that they were favored to win the Copa del oh, Rey. Man. Sure, and, at uh, least the Copa del Rey. At least, and, Champions uh, League, they were favorites. Okay. And once, uh, once again, uh, you know, Messi was uh, with his head down. And a- every time I watch Messi, and he's the best player in the world. Okay, that's no doubt about it. But every time he goes on a final, uh, uh, Copa de America, World Cup, Copa del Rey, his head is down. His you mentality know. is not there. He's, he's got to come to Inter. That's and and, and he, loses, <laughs> he loses those finals. Anyway, Spalletti can fix him. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah. But one thing that I wanted to say, and I think they should change the rule, is that Empoli, to me, does not deserve to go to Serie B. And if Genoa and Empoli are tied, uh, they should play one game. Hmm. Instead you know, of goal difference? Instead no, of goal... That's a head. Oh. Head, to, head to head. Twice. Yeah, Genoa. take that away from them. No, they're tight. It's, they well, are the same. Their doesn't team. matter. They Why have does it the, matter? The, because this is going to Serie B. You're not... You but know. they beat them both times, so they're the better team. You think for Champions League it's okay? For... for uh, the, this, There should be a play out. For, to, if you're going play to out Serie... Play a lot of fun. If you go to Serie B... There should be a, there should be a play out. A player would be for those very, uh, if very they fun, have a tie if they tie the same way they, they do, do the playoff of to come in, into the Serie A. Some yeah, of they, the, they do the they do right. a playoff. They should have the same thing yeah. for uh, you know make sure that it's you Chita give it the Verona game. in yeah. the final. By the way, I mean there's too much Chita a stake. Chita Della versus Verona. There's too much a stake. Verona. Yeah. I mean one play, Verona play one Verona. game. <laughs> they have the same point. I mean Empoli to me didn't deserve to go to to Serie B. Guys, De Rossi officially last game for Roma started the match. Of course, um, the stadium was outrageous. Um, a lot of sad goodbyes. We don't know exactly what's next for him. You know, he's he's made it pretty clear that he would have liked to keep playing at Roma and does want to keep playing on. Whether that happens or whether it doesn't, we don't know. Uh, but just a look back mm-hmm. on Daniele's career. I think he's one of those guys, and I said it yesterday in the video that we shot, but just to say it again, um, he was one of those guys that left nothing but 110% on the pitch every time um, he left it. And I was speaking to some of um, my friends that are Roma fans and part of the Roma Club New York, and it was a very sad day for them. Not just, not even about the lack of Champions League, but more so that you're losing your Capitano and the way that you're losing the Capitano, the guy dedicated his life to Roma and dedicated his life to Italy and the Azzurri. I wish he would have gotten a better sending off, but it's not about that. What the fans did for him was was beautiful. He got his lap of honor. Um, and I think that De Rossi is classified. His whole career is determined based off what he last said, which was the only thing that you could do for me that would make me happy, the best sending off that you could give me is to just be happy and support Roma, support the club. So I think even at the hardest time where he didn't even right. agree with the club, he was willing to put himself aside and still want the best for Roma. The guy doesn't need to be uh, to be signed by Roma, to be honest with you. But they, it's a, a disgrace what they're doing to, to the top players and uh, not in the in uh, in the Roma franchising. I, I'm wondering if this uh, 
the fact that even uh, when when Spalletti was the coach, I think it's somebody into the management that factors in into those kind of decision making. Like Spalletti benching Totti and just calling him the last two three minutes, and then Totti not being played, you know, in the last uh, the last year of his career, and uh, kind of humiliated. And now now this management making this decision to to not resign De Rossi. So this is really sick, sickening to me. So at least you have a discussion, you know, of the, you know, you call the guy into the office. I said, listen, uh, by the way, Daniele, we we want to terminate your staff, but uh, we want we, we are looking at you into the, you know, a position into the management. You and Totti can do great things together. The fact that you play the game, you know, the the, the players, you know, the the system. But uh, you know, humiliating a, a franchise player or, or a symbol of a, of the Roma team very much that so. way is very very dis- disgraceful. If I were to put it in a few words, so uh, I don't know if uh, for if I were De Rossi and I had a chance to be playing in another Italian team. No, he's not going to. He's not going to do he's that. Do It'd be nice team. to see him in Amalas, though, right? To catch a couple of games over here, maybe on New York team. Or I would something. take him on AC Milan. <laughs> it's well, where did that come from? <laughs> what do you think about De Rossi? What do you think about his career? No, I, it's uh, the, the, he doesn't want to go into. From what I I read, he doesn't want to go into management. He wants to play soccer. Yeah. So the guy wants to play soccer. He's ready, and he told you that if I pay, if I play, you pay me. If I don't play, you don't have to pay. What else? Do you, one more what, you need. You know, what else can he say? I mean, uh, how clear can he make it? And if you are one of the gladiators from from the team and, and you are the captain, why not? You know, you put him, he stays with the team, he's good for the locker room, he's good for uh, when he's on the field, he makes the difference. Young players. So uh, if he plays, you pay him. If you don't play, I mean, you have, it's a win-win for both uh, uh, for both the, mm. the player, the Rossi, yeah. and and the team, so I, I I really don't understand, and that's part of uh, uh, the um, the team. Uh, which direction is this team going? I never understood, uh, you know, which way they want to go. And, and with Palotta, I don't know if he doesn't want the team, if he doesn't have the money Seven to the run team. the team, you know. I and I think that the team is for sale. They to, they're looking for uh, for someone to buy it. Mm. You know, just sell the team. Let this team go on a direction. Which way we're going to go? You're going to get the stadium. You're going to get the stadium. You're going to go in the Champions League. You, you, what do you want to do? And I feel like De Rossi got caught in all this uh, drama. Yeah, so. unrightfully so. Yeah, but no excuses from their side. No matter what, I think anybody should have handled this better yeah. for yeah. somebody who did as much as De Rossi did yeah. for the well, club. Yeah, Remember, De Rossi like Totti. You know, they are childhood boys of Roma. Those are the guys that you want. A guy that's going to stay for, you know, is going to stay with Roma for his whole life if he had to, right? And uh, both him and Totti, uh, they refused to go to different teams mm-hmm. where they could have maybe won a lot more. Everything. Ballon you know, d'Or, Internationally or even, <clears throat> even in Italy. So, I mean, these are guys that they, they were loyal to money. you. They were loyal to you. They stay with you. They sacrifice because of their love, their love for Roma, their love for the city and for the team. And then you treat the player like that. And especially when it's not uh, to the point where you say, oh, De Rossi wanted five million a year. And you say, okay, now you understand, okay, they couldn't come to terms and whatever. This guy is, like Gaetano said, is willing to to not get paid, to just stay there because he loves Roma that much. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's upsetting. It's upsetting that you but let see, someone go like right. that. Maybe but this is what's, right. excuse me, Mike, yeah. this is what's changed. When we were young, me and uh, your father and Gaetano, you looked at the players because that's what the players did. Wearing a jersey like AC Milano, Juventus or Roma, things like that. This is the dream of your life. You play, you spit blood on the field until they take you out on a body bag, dead. <laughs> okay? Nowadays, we have uh, the sports that comes out almost is, is becoming secondary. What's the primary, uh, you know, goal of this uh, of this franchise is, is making money, okay? That's why you see uh, the Russians buying into the, the Italian Championship, the South, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, the, the flying Emirates buying into the stuff. They those are the franchises that they own. It's about business. Well, I'm o- I'm okay with that. I'm very much okay with that. It's just now, you also have to have the look culture at what of the. the did. They humiliated, uh, uh, you know, uh, Totti. Now they're going after the Rossi. You also, you also, stuff. but yeah. when when you this buy a club, you can't I'm, disrespect its tradition. Yeah, but That's Marco, the problem. This is I'm trying to tell you that back then it was not. We didn't have this kind of problem. We have the we had the yeah because you know, it changed. Uh, Football. The owners used to be the local. 
uh, right. person that was that had a little bit more money than everyone else, or a lot more money than and everyone else, ran and ran the team right. because of the pride of the but thing. Now, uh, now it's it's a different world. It's a know. big business, and that's why you have big business coming in. People that have ridiculous amount of money that own teams and manage the teams. But it's when you different. when you do do that, you also need to get the people that understand that kind of local sense of why De Rossi is so important. Why Totti is so important? Yeah. Why all of these it's guys like that way you're are key a to their history? You wipe history out of the out of the team. I well, mean, how does the team was born? I was cre- I was yeah. created. Which one were the best players? The, yeah. the franchise player and all the stuff. You take a sponge and just there's, two there's, three shots. It's all over. Now we are in charge, and we are uh, you know those are the new rules. You like it? You're fine. If you don't like it, you are. There was a French journalist who went on TV. He's a PSG fan, I believe, and I feel like I said this before, but. He was saying how PSG, the ownership over there, and the reason why he feels like they have no winning spirit or no attitude is that, he says, be honest, PSG don't have a rich history, but they do have a history. Players like Ronaldinho were there. They were from the 60s or the 70s. He said this ownership came in. They wiped everything that PSG was before they came in. They don't want to remember any of it. They don't want to respect their legends. No legends were even invited to their Champions League game against... Manchester United, yeah. Mm. Um, While on the opposite side, Manchester United brought all of their legends to the game. They brought Sir Alex to the game. They brought Evra. They brought everybody because those kind of guys are important in remembering to the younger guys. Those are the ones that wrote the history so that you could be playing here. And I agree with you, Antonio. I think that that's a very key part that people Mm. often lack and and forget about. Maybe Rome are doing something different. Maybe they're just trying to find a new identity, just trying to find a new way. And maybe we just don't understand it right now. But I'm really interested to see what Roma has on their path. They said they want to go the younger route, try to do the young talent sort of thing. Uh, it looks like Zaniolo's been a lot of part of this marketing. So maybe and are they going to sell him now? No, maybe not. Maybe they're going to turn over a new leaf and just start fresh and start building again from uh, young, play, young, talented players. But I'm excited to see the future for them. Um, Quayarella, mm-hmm. top goal scorer. Absolutely incredible. Another one. I know. I don't think we... Actually, we probably did predict who the top goal scorer was, yeah. but I didn't think about I, I clipping put it. I think we both said Icardi. I probably put Icardi. Nobody here put Quayarella. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Antonio, well, I wonder who you put. I wonder who you put. Not I Ronaldo. <laughs> Who'd you put? I, no, I didn't put Ronaldo. Who'd you guess? Because you didn't know Piontek back then. I put Cutrone, I think, right? Cutrone. <laughs> uh, I, I actually did put Cutrone. And I don't know That's who you put funny. either. But um, anyway, Quayarella, 36 years old, aging like fine wine over here. Top goal scorer. I know everybody's going to say that they were all penalty kicks, but listen, penalty kicks are part of the game. Um, everybody else has scored plenty of penalty kicks, um, and a lot of them were earned by them. So I don't think that there's anything to take away from them. And look, look at it. Uh, look, even Icardi misses penalty kicks. Messi misses penalty Every Even the top players in the world miss penalty kicks all the time. Listen, Icardi is missing because what your uncle told me the other day. You remember what he said, Apani Antico? I think <laughs> <laughs> you remember what your, your, your brother-in-law said. Okay, he cardi technically <laughs> he wants out. So what he's doing is bringing him the price of his uh, of his uh, cartellino all the way to the to the bottom. So him he can just be moved across the across the railroad over there from uh, Milano to Torino and play for Juventus. All these theories That's, coming out. Yeah, I'm telling you, he was right. Listen, I, I at the beginning, I was uh, having a hard time trying to, to buy into that stuff. But, <laughs> but then he, uh, he right? made out oh, well, uh, immediately. He, he was, he, you uh, know, yeah, something, something uh, went on. Uh, let me, uh, <laughs> I said, this guy's yeah. right. Franco, if you're listening to the podcast, no, genius. 100% right. I, th- I think your being is, is going a little bit wacky because he was talking <laughs> about fantasy, Fanta No, culture. it's not Fanta Fantacalcio. That's what he was That's talking about. Uh, for the people I, don't know Fantacalcio, what are you translating? It's like fantasy, fantasy sports. Fantasy, fantasy football. football. Yeah. Fantasy, okay. football. Okay. fantasy sports. So That's what he was talking about. <laughs> anyway, guys, no. I want to say yes. something about Quagliarella. I mean, he scored an unbelievable goal. One of the best goals I've ever seen when he crossed. And with the, the behind back, the back, behind the back. the back heel, he put the ball on the opposite. Versus I, Napoli. Yep. Oh my That's god! Unbelievable! Class. What a goal! But just to, goal of the you year know, for the, sure. To, t- to think about doing that. Just to think, you know, you would never think about that. You know, it, just to think about it and doing it, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's crazy because Guadalajara, much like Di Natale, later on in his career, he's been really been able to to develop into that great striker. Before, it was good, but you never say, oh, this guy is unbelievable. Instead, this year, masterful. Guess why? 
I think I have an idea why this is happening at the latest of, of the career. Well, when you have a when you have a coach that just tells you, listen, go over there and play the game. Not like Allegri, I want you to do this and this, and don't move side to side, don't go front to back. This guy has been giving, it's like a, it's like a free moving, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a mine. Okay. So he can go whatever he doesn't have to do, doesn't have to obey to anybody. Oh, you don't know what, what is said in the locker room. Besides that, Quagliarella, when you have a certain experience, you see the game in a different way. Mm -hmm. You have these, you he know, all the, all the games in your leg, it becomes like computer work. He doesn't so need you're able, also you'll know, else. you'll know already. Somebody's going this way, you push this yeah. way. You know? He knows well, where the net it's is. Like, he knows where the exactly. Net. It's like blindfolded. That's why, he can that's do why so. we didn't see Dybala. Dybala okay, Dybala before, before, we, before we end that, I want to I wanna say about Mihailovic. Mm -hmm. Ended in 10th place. Oh, yeah. He took over from Pipo and Zaghi. 18th place, Bologna. Releg it would have been relegated, Bologna. And I got a stat. 21 games, Pipo coached Bologna. He earned 14 points. Sinisa took over, only 17 games, so four less than Inzaghi. He earned 30 points, more than double what people did in less, in games. less games. Mihalovic, honestly, going for coach of the season, I'll ask you guys who coach of the season is, but 30 out of a possible 50 points, and Mihalovic not only saves Bologna, but puts Bologna in the top half of the table. What Incredible. A, what a beast. Yeah. Great job by by Sinisa. Well, Bologna Bologna made the right moves in January. They got those two, Soriano, Soriano uh, and so, uh, Sansone. 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 Yeah, right. Okay, these are guys that played in Serie A. They played at a high level, and he changed a little bit. Orsolini, he put Orsolini, put Orsolini in the right place. And Mihailovic is one of those guys. He demands the most out of everybody. You see him over there. If I had Mihailovic, I would be scared of him. I would mm -hmm. be. He demands respect, which is good. So, but the thing is, besides just the respect. He understands the the the, the important the importance of the of the job, and he completely transformed this team. And I, I hope that he's able to stay on and Bologna Keep get going. some better players. He and actually they can... said, "I want to cut you off." He actually said, uh, "I'm ready for a bigger team now." So, really? Yeah, he actually said a few days ago. So it looks nah. like I don't blame him either. Yo, he did his job at Bologna. Oh, yeah, I guess it depends where it is. Of course, so, I I agree. It depends where it is. Lazio or yeah. something. Lazio would, yeah, that's what I was saying. Go, yeah. Or I think Lazio. Even a, even a and he has a lot. He's, he's, from, he's from Lazio. He's even though he didn't that. play good at Milan, I think. No, he didn't do bad at Milan. I think that he, he was on right. On, he do, I think he, he was wrongfully. Sacked. Yeah, but you know what? It depends also on the situation. Every coach, it's a situation. If you get to Inter, like Gasperini, I, I always said, listen, Gasperini, <laughs> he, was hard done, he was hard done by it. Gasperini, if he would have went to Inter when they had the better players, of course he would have done better. Mm -hmm. He went to Inter where they would buy Jonathan for $6 million. What are you going to win? He has better players on Atalanta than Jonathan yeah. as a right back. Guys, so coach of the season, I'm going to give you four options. Huh. Allegri, Gasperini, <laughs> Mihailovic, Mazzari. Gasperini. They're all good. I'm gonna have to go with Gasperini. They're all good yeah. though. I don't think that you can even say anybody you have other to than say Gasperini. Gasp. Come on, <laughs> say Gaetano, break it, Gaetano, even break before it. The season starts. Don't be, don't be a sheep. Break it. Don't <laughs> be a follower. Allegri, Allegri, <laughs> Allegri, Allegri. Go ahead, go ahead, Allegri. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Allegri. Mi, Mi, Mihailovic has a good argument, but yeah, you Mihailovic, by Gasperini. Gasperini. No, you gotta go with Gasperini. Gasperini. I mean, he, he wrote the history. I mean, this yeah, team has never been there. This yeah. is like a Leicester City, except they didn't win the title. Maybe next year they'll win it. Why are you laughing? I hope. I hope. I hope. <laughs> we were laughing last year if uh, we said Atalanta were Champions League. Right? Absolutely. And I hope that the next year we're laughing too. Gianpaolo too is another coach that might be on the market. Um, I know he's supposed to decide today or this week. Yeah. Um, what happens to him? His Sampdoria kind of dipped. He didn't yeah. have a very they were, good season. They were he got doing a lot of criticism. They were doing that. really well at one point. Um, Inzaghi too. Um, Inzaghi, another one. And Mazzari did very well. Yeah. Mazzari did very well. Yeah, so. Roma um, qualifying for champion for Europa League. Qual no, um, no, no. They have to qualify. Yeah, yeah, yeah they they're qualifying qualify. for Champions League. Yeah. Um, and last thing, Europa unless we have a any good questions, check real quick while I while I say this. Totti got eliminated from that last thing. So the only one that's left in the voting is Baggio and Maldini. Wow. One's gotta go. Uh, easy. Mm. Mike, get a question. See if there's an, one or two questions. Mm. Really Maldini. Maldini's gonna stay. Oh. oh. It's not even close. Maldini's out. Maldini out. And Maldini's my friend. Oh. <laughs> oh, that hope you're not watching. I hope you're not watching, but... The, Everybody's gonna Paolo Maldini this. and Baggio. I mean, Baggio is yeah, He's like the best, one of the best ever, right? Yeah, yeah. By the way, I think Maldini is um Top. is winning in this voting. 
I didn't I didn't count it yet, wow. but I, think, Milan I see fans so are. many Maldinis. Wow. Yeah. I, I think it's also a generational thing too, kind of, you know. Maldini was more our time than, no than Baggio was, and there's a lot a lot of younger people that are voting. Mike, any questions? Yeah, let's get end? one. We got a pretty good question. Let's finish it with this. It says, okay, two players. Which player disappointed you this season, and which player surprised you this season? Ooh, that's disappointed, all think it was about. probably <laughs> for me, Icardi and Chiesa. Uh, surprise... <laughs> Probably Piontek, because he proved me wrong twice. I don't know who he was, and he went to Milan. He proved me wrong. I didn't think he'd play good there. Surprise, Piontek. Disappointment, Simeone. Oh, yeah, that's another one. Surprise, uh, Quagliarella. Oh. Disappointed. Um, hmm. Yeah, I would say I would go with Chiesa. Chiesa? Chiesa, so bad. I mean, how can you be... Uh, Icardi's got to be the most... Uh, disappointed uh, player you know we i think some of uh, some of us took him for the to be capo the, the capo cannoniere and i mean the things that happen at inter it's that's really bad i mean i don't think it's ever happened that you somebody takes the, the captain armband during the season i mean that's really uh, yeah, but that's, that's the really thing that is why i didn't i didn't do it because i think somehow it was conditioned by the, this all of this uh, punishment that they got i don't, I don't think i will take i will put him into Surprise? that, that. Mm, well i think yeah piontek i didn't i didn't expect them or five or qualiaral i mean i never expect them to be the leading mm. scorer even the, zapata you know there's a few that you yeah. could say mm. zapata was good too he, yeah well disappointed i would say cardi is the go-to one, but Zeko for me, uh, he doesn't. He had, you know, you have. <clears throat> excuse me, you have to take control of that Roma team, and he just didn't do it. And then surprise, Piontek, and then Zapata. I was gonna say the guy had a breakout season mm -hmm. this year and and really steamrolled Atalanta to third Even place. Even Dybala could be talked about on that disappointment yeah. of the season. That's true. That's one I was just and thinking about. But again, right Dybala now. to me, Dybala <laughs> would put him in the same situation with Icardi. <laughs> Dybala was forced Mike, to, to play that, that yeah. point. Uh, well, b before we uh, we conclude, I mean, uh, we have to... Uh, I'm really disappointed about Juventus and Agnelli. They still do not have a coach. I mean, they should have had a coach by now. And I'm disappointed if, n if it's not going to be uh, Guardiola or Conte. Do you think that Conte is a done deal with Inter? Yeah. I think... No, I think he's still his first choice is Juventus. So unless some, but something's gonna happen within this week. If nothing happens this week, he's going to Inter. I think he had his pen yesterday. He was looking. He was about to sign. Then Empoli scored. He said, "Wait a second, I'm not gonna go to Europa League." He was. He so, didn't know what to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, if Juventus doesn't get Guardiola Conte, I'd be very disappointed. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Nah. Sorry. I mean, last night they were saying uh, they were still saying Inzaghi, Simone Inzaghi, is still going to Juventus. I mean, uh, this morning they say Tardelli, Sarri, yeah. Tardelli said that he's going to uh, Inzaghi is going to Juventus. Hmm. So I'm I'm disappointed there. What about uh, AC Milan? Who's going to AC Milan? I'll keep Gattuso. Gattuso to me did not disappoint. I mean, AC Milan didn't perform. And they, listen, he got eliminated for one point. It's, we're talking at one point. You do not want to punish a coach starting with a mediocre coach. or just. And he's, a, he's also always taken responsibility he, as yeah. a professional. I think, so, so I think he's, he's good with the, uh, on the locker room. He, he, got, he got, you know, uh, he had a lot of situations where... Uh, Players, they were a little injuries. bit off the trails, injuries and all the stuff. He's the only one that I think I can see still uh, holding the group together and uh, and make sure that the nothing spills out. I think the only thing that problem. would I think the only thing that would change maybe for Gattuso, the only two guys that I would probably replace him with that I could think of, Sarri. If I was Milan, no way. I would no go way. as hard as you can to Gasparini, try to beg yes. Sarri. Only, the only one I would take Gasparini, no, and number, but, uh, nobody else. And number two, Di Francesco. I think no, that you can make no, a, I think no, you can make no. a solid argument for Di both Francesco of those for guys. sure. Sarri, I don't think he's going to no. go to a non No, no, I'm say, I'm, but I'm saying the replacement, if if you could, and maybe Gasparini. I think that those three have very, very good arguments. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but Di Francesco, I think, would be fit there. But Gasparini, well, you're going to go from Champions League to Europa Not League after you just earned it? Di Francesco, it, my know? bad, my bad. Di yeah. Francesco, I think it'll be a good fit there. What do you I think, think Milan? It all depends if the players follow Gattuso and if Milan is serious enough to buy certain players. But given the fact that they didn't make Champions League, they might not be able to make that many transfer moves. Yeah, yeah but the financial so, play, it, it is what it is. But I don't, we're going to have the deal with what we have. But also, exactly. So now you might need a coach that can make more of what you got. Sinisa yeah. back. 
Mm, I don't think so. I don't think AC Milan no. is going to bring it. Why not? Uh, what do you think? Uh, until uh, Leonardo Maldini, uh, until we find out about what's going on with Leonardo, uh, you know, they're not going to make any decision. Whoever is going to come in, that's, then he's going to choose you know, the coach. Mm, one thing I can say, I mean, one of those two big guys that you just named right now, I think they should be just uh, assisting Gattuso into the game on the bench. Gaetano, I mean, uh, Leonardo was a coach. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Uh, I mean, they did, but not from the top. I want to see no, him I'm on sure, the bench. I'm sure they did it today. On, on, the on, on, on Monday, Why don't you go over there and help On Monday, I'm sure that on Monday, that's what they talked about. Yeah? Sure, of course. Real quick, I did want to do this. Um, I'm going to say a team, and you're going to give me from A to D, mm-hmm. or A to F, right? Mm-hmm. It's usually A to F, um, of their season. Let's do quick. Let's not take too much time. Peter, Juventus. Serie A speaking or in, gen- in, in general? Champions Let's say season. season. Yeah. Let's the say season. season. The whole season, season, I would give B plus. A minus. A minus. Uh, B. C. <laughs> <laughs> Napoli. Uh, Napoli. We'll start here. We'll Napoli, uh, A minus. Mike? A minus. They surprised me, but they, they got so far far. It's such a bit. Uh, a minus. I would say B. B plus. B plus. Um, who's third? Uh, Atalanta. Oh, A plus 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 plus. Same thing. Yeah. A, 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 a. Not even Come A on, plus. A plus. Not even A, a plus. plus. You guys, you guys are kidding? Me. You, <laughs> you kidding me? Seriously. What do you want to do with the right. I'll start with Inter. Um, I will say B. C plus because they almost gave uh, their fans a heart attack. Go. Yeah. Uh, B, <laughs> B minus because you still made the Champions League, but D. That's why you didn't go F. B minus because they should have safely made Champions Dummy. League. This is for dummies. <laughs> Milan. Uh, Milan. Uh, I mean, I would say B minus. Uh, C minus got kicked out of the Europa Holy League. Uh, B plus. <laughs> B plus. C. Mm-hmm. C plus. Yeah, probably a C is, uh, is more of C plus a... C plus for me. You're a great guy. Um, Roma? Oh, uh, oh, wait, no. Roma. Sorry. Huh? Roma. Roma? Uh, C minus. Uh, B minus. B minus. C. C minus. F. Uh, F. Um, last one. Lazio. Lazio, Lazio, I always liked Lazio. I would say a B. Uh, B, just because they secured Europa League. But and they one Coppa Italia. Mm-hmm. B. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying, Europa B. League. Yeah, yeah, they won the cup. I mean, that's yeah. uh, that's B, yes. B. I agree with that. Very B. good. All right. <laughs> Wait, let me say hello to one of my friends. Uh, say hello to one of your friends. <laughs> okay, Stefan, I, I, I told you, I promise you, yeah. your son Antonio, oh, like yeah. I said, hey, Antonio, how the hell you didn't remember the name of my son? He's got the same oh, name shit. of you. What a great name. So, hey, Antonio, keep watching uh, uh, the podcast. Spread all the news with all your friends. Make sure you study hard. I know this is for everybody. If you guys are not, you're not done with the finals, this is the time. Get your finals done and then keep watching uh, uh, IFTV all the time. Buy the merchandise. Do we have any sales, by we the way? Have yes, we have a sale. Oh, yes. Yes. We have a sale. <laughs> okay, what is the sale? 30% off. 30% so like off. Items. 30, what website? Uh, at Italian Football TV. Italian Punto com. Punto com. Okay. <laughs> so we got to so sell. You said it. I thought you were going to forget okay, to say it. We got to sell. sell. And uh, don't lose hope because there's always tomorrow. You know, my grandfather used to say something to me when we used to go fishing. He says, when there is a bad weather, guess what comes after the bad weather? It's going to come sun. So uh, there is the hope. So the next season is probably going to be much better. So Milan's in a real, real storm. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> Right, well, this is this is much better than uh, than the, the way you sounded in the last podcast. That's I'm, right. I'm, I'm, so, uh, I'm proud of you. And yeah, and there's, there is a, there is sun coming. The Italy, the young kids are doing fantastic. The U17s did a great job getting to the finals of the Euros. The U20 in the World Cup won back to back their first two games against Me- Mexico and Ecuador. Um, so the World Cup, U20 World Cup, and we have Italy in the Women's World, World Cup, Cup this Women's summer. That's right. So wow. And everybody looks good. Everybody's doing good. And the sun is going to keep, keep shining. Again, okay? <laughs> Very good. Hey, right. okay, Anto, how much you rate the podcast? I'm a, guys, make sure. Five, okay, stars. five, five stars. stars. Very good. Uh, what else do we have to say? That's yeah. it. That's it. We got- That's it? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. As always, thank you for watching. Ciao, guys. Ciao, guys.